Hello and welcome to the channel, I'm Tom. Uh, this is going to be a very simple guide on how to TIG weld. So this is for the people that want to give it a go. Um, I've watched loads of videos on YouTube and they're still baffled uh, or can't get to grips with what they actually need to do. So I'm going to break it down into really simple steps. I'm not going to baffle you with science and loads of settings and stuff like that. There are loads of other videos out there that uh, do that. Um, I'm literally just going to break it down into manageable bits. This is how I would teach somebody to get them going initially with TIG. It's the foundations to build upon, show somebody the basics, and then they can develop their skills in the real world. So this is what I would do as a starter intro. So please subscribe if you haven't. Um, I really want to grow the channel. Uh, check out Metal Shaper Tom on Instagram. Uh, I've got loads of cool stuff on there, so you can kind of see what I do on a daily basis. And uh, please support the channel via the PayPal link. Uh, I do this all in my free time, so any support and help would be absolutely fantastic. So cheers for that. I'll crack on and show you uh, the basics of TIG welding. Okay, let's start with what we're actually going to be welding. This is a piece of 20 gauge mild steel or 0.9 mil in new money. So. This is most commonly used on uh, car restoration bodywork. That's what I use it on uh, on a daily basis. And one of the reasons for learning on something so thin is it's harder to learn, but it's easier to apply them skills when you weld into something thicker. But while learning on something a bit thicker is easier to weld because it's more forgiving, doesn't distort, doesn't burn through as easy but it's harder to then apply them skills when welding something so thin. So I think if you can grasp like this concept, it's easier to apply them skills uh, on thicker material going forward. So this is what we're gonna be welding. I won't go on to aluminium because that's probably slightly a little bit more advanced. So we'll just get you the basics on, uh, initially to get you going on mold steel because it's the most commonly used uh, material with a vehicle restoration and learning how to take weld. Okay, so this is a very simple setup on the power weld machine. I would have liked to have shown you on the RTEC, but that is currently being repaired as we speak. So on here, I'm gonna select TIG, manual setup, two touch. So that means when you press the trigger and strike the arc, you're gonna hold it down, weld, and then once you release the trigger, then your weld will stop. Uh, a lot of people use the foot pedal, but it's probably best to learn on the trigger first. Uh, DC is steel, AC is aluminium, so DC. High frequency, so that allows you to strike uh, when you press the trigger. So we're gonna select that one, no pulse. And this is a very simple setup. So we need very minimal pre-gas for what we're doing. Uh, very minimal slope up, so that's how long it actually takes to reach your full amperage that you select. So for this, we're going to select 27 amps. Um, down slope, we don't need anything, so that means uh, you can then just gradually come off the power, but we don't need that. And post gas is just set at one second. So for steel as well, you're going to need a sharp tungsten. Hopefully that focuses like that, and uh, then you're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to start off using no wire. A lot of people rush in straight away and they try TIG welding uh, with wire and they're getting it stuck to the tungsten or the material. And basically how to avoid that is we need to do the basics first. So we need to create a weld puddle. Um, so we've got to keep our tungsten a couple of mil away from the material. And then once you've got your weld puddle, we need to then move at a nice consistent speed along controlling that weld puddle and just moving in a nice straight line. So we're going to practice basically our hand-eye coordination, uh, judging the weld pull, the speed that we're going at, the direction of travel. And we need to get those things right first and be able to control the actual weld pull uh, like initially before we can then start introducing wire. So I'm going to do, these, do this uh, a couple of times so you can see what I'm doing, uh, kind of like the speed that I'm traveling at. And then once that is um, consistent, I will then start adding wire 
um, and I'll explain that then. Okay, so what I forgot to mention was, for steel, you want to leave the tungsten out about 5 mil. This will give you a nicer arc. I'm now going to do a second run. I've turned up the amps, but because we're doing it on a steel plate, it's sucking a lot of the heat in. So I'm going to turn the amps up to create a bigger well pool. Okay, so these are the three welds I'd done. Um, initially, the first one was a little bit too cold, so I turned up the amps and got a, a bigger weld pull. But that is what we are looking for there. So it's nice and straight, a nice burn all the way through, um, nice consistent burn. So you're traveling at the right speed, you're the right distance away from the material, you've got full control of your weld pull. Um, and that is what we're looking for. So if you can get somewhere like that, then that's absolutely fantastic. Just keep practicing. You can put loads of runs down. They don't need to be this long. You know, just practice little short ones. Uh, but ideally in a straight line, it's a good habit to get into. Um, so once you've got uh, to a decent standard on there, then I would say you're then ready to then move on to adding wire. So that's the next step. Okay, now moving on to introducing the wire to the weld pool. This is just your standard uh, mild steel rod. I got this from Artec uh, in a little one kilo pack. This is one mil in diameter and that's sufficient for the 0.9 material that we're using. I'm gonna do a close up um, just so you can see uh, like a slow down version without striking up the arc uh, of the technique that I'm gonna be using. Um, and then I'm gonna try and capture it on the camera um, actually when I'm uh, in basically full flow, actually tigging away. Um, but I've done a couple of practices and the focus isn't that great. So hopefully you can kind of grasp the, the method that I'm trying to show you and just break it down into some simple steps and you see the result and then put two and two together. And hopefully it, it just help you on your journey of trying to learn how to tig weld. Um, this is just my way of doing it. Again, many ways of doing it. People may use different size tungsten, different size rods, stuff like that, but that's just their way. This is my way. It works for me and it's helped people that I've taught before, so fingers crossed it can help you. Um, so I'll show you a close-up look now of uh, a slow down version of what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, just like we did last time, I've marked some lines and that's what we're gonna follow. I'm gonna start at this end and move in this direction towards me. Um, that way I can always see the well pull and you're, it's kind of like pushing into the material. So when we start at this end, you want to just hold it there for a split second, let that well pull develop, get to a decent size, and then you can add the rod. And then what you want to do is get yourself into a nice rhythm. So every time you put the rod in, you're gradually moving. And then it should be kind of like clockwork in synchro, you know, just in, out, in, out and gradually work your way along. What you don't want to do is start hacking at it, you know, jabbing loads of rod in, you know, become uneven. It, this this kind of works hand in hand. This You've got to travel at a nice steady speed, consistent well pull, uh, adding the right amount of rod each time in a nice steady motion. And then that way, fingers crossed, if you get those three elements right, you'll end up with a nice neat run but this will develop over time. You'll find your own little pattern. Uh, you'll find a speed that suits you. Some people put the joins, uh, the, the rod close together. Others like to space them out. It's an individual thing, depending on different types of material. But at the moment, let's just practice consistency, working along that line, and then hopefully 
those skills would develop. Okay, so these are the two wells I've just completed. So if I just get into the right light there, hopefully you can see each time I've added the rod, it creates its own little raised section on both of them there. So I'll just do a side-by-side -side comparison with fusing. So that is a nice smooth wire there, because we haven't added any wire at all to actually add in wire on here see each individual well pull there. So I just turn this over so you can see what the penetration looks like. So this is what it looks like with wire. Again, every time you add the rod it will come through on the back. And over here is the fused uh, penetration. So again, you do get a decent amount if done correctly and got the right amp. So that weld is strong. Uh, but that's what it should look like. Okay, so that's as far as I'm going to take this video. I don't feel the need to then start showing butt joints or corner joints or T-fillets or anything like that. I think that's kind of like a part two. I think if you get the basics right and get to a good standard on that, then introduce those harder joints. Uh, I don't think you should jump into them too soon. Just spend a bit of time getting this right. If you get to a decent standard on this, then you'll pro progress quicker uh, when you attempt the joints and stuff like that. Then rather than just rush straight into them without um, getting a good foundation, doing it like this. That's just my opinion. Others may differ. You know, I'm not preaching here. I'm just trying to help viewers. Um, don't beat yourself up if it's not going right. Give yourself five minutes. It can be very frustrating if you keep dipping the tip and stuff like that. If you can't see through your mask properly, you can get magnifying glasses and, and, and stuff like that that help you because you do have to be really close uh, to the joint. So yeah, don't beat yourself up. Give yourself five minutes, come back to it, you know, and all of a sudden it will just happen and it's really rewarding. And then you'll just say to yourself, God, why didn't I do this sooner? So, um, Hopefully there's enough information in this video to just get you going and show you the basics. Um, and that's all I wanted to do with this video. So hopefully I've put that across in my way that I do. And uh, that is pretty much it. If you do want a part two, then let me know. I don't mind doing that, but uh, leave me a comment. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.